So here right now, it is January here in the UK. It's getting pretty cold now. Um, as you might have seen in my last videos, I do like to do a lot of my work in my shed. I like to get out there, I can make as much mess as I want to, and I don't really have to clean it up so badly. But it's getting proper cold. It's a metal shed with no electricity and only candles for heating, and it's a bit too cold for it now. Cold hands means you have accidents when you're using tools, especially sharp tools. So I've been bringing it indoors a lot. And the one thing I've found is I haven't really got anywhere to clamp anything without making a bit of a mark um, on the tables and things, which my wife won't be really impressed with. Um, and I do like to sit in the rocking chair that I've made and uh, carve on there. And again, this, all you've got is your hands. Sometimes I'm doing something like a spoon. I want to use more of a draw knife that uses two hands. So I wanted something that's going to hold my work down, hold it tight, but isn't going to be too cumbersome to move around. It's nice and transportable. I can use it anywhere and everywhere. And then I came across this idea. Essentially, what you, what you should have seen on the thumbnail at the front there is it's basically just a board that can either sit on my lap or across the tabletop or across uh, the top of my chair with a couple of holes in the middle and some rope hanging down. And then you, write, you use your feet to hold the rope tight against what you're carving and what you're working on. So you're providing your own clamp there. So as long as the wood is hard enough and the rope is strong enough, you should be able to hold it tight enough as well. If not, work on those quads and that'll get you there as well. So all you're gonna need for it is dirt cheap, a plank of wood. Now I've already pre-cut mine. Um, that was a big old two and a half meter length. I've cut that down to about 65 centimeters. Uh, which is what I tend to work in. I don't always work in inches, so I've gone centimetres. You'll have to convert it on Google or something if you're not sure. But that's what fit, fits my chair. All you really need to know is, if you're going to use it on your lap, is it going to be wide enough to go from one edge of your thigh to the other edge of your thigh? If it's going to be used on a chair, is it going to reach from one arm to the other arm? And if you're going to use it and clamp it to a table, is it going to be deep enough that way so that you can clamp it safely onto a table. Just think about those factors and then it can be as big as you want it. Then we need some sturdy rope. I got this, this was only a pound a meter. Uh, that's Great British Pounds um, for a meter long. Dirt cheap, not expensive at all. I like to use natural rope where I can do, um, just because I like the idea of naturalness. I don't like using plastic unless I have to, um, but or nylon or anything like that. But uh, yeah, dirt cheap. Nice, super thick rope. That's going to last me a long, long time. Tools wise, I'm just going to need a drill with some drill bits. Saw, obviously, for cutting the wood there to start with. And some clamps to hold it down with afterwards and before. That's pretty much it. I am going to put a few more details on it using a draw knife um, and possibly using a couple of my other knives. We'll see how things go. But you don't have to. You just have to take the edges off and that's it. You can leave it as rough as you like. You can make it as pretty as you like. You take it where you want it. So, let's have a go. Okay then, I think we're nearly ready to go. So, I've already marked out my board, ready for the holes to go in. I found the center point of the entire board there, and then four spots there for the holes to go in. Now, I've marked four so that I can either put in two sets of rope on either side if something needs to be clamped on that a little bit tighter, or I can cross it over if I needed to, or I can work from one side or the other if there's some reason I needed to do both. It just gives me those options. Also then with the holes you can fashion some pins in to make a spoon mule of some sort as well if you wanted to. It's completely up to you, whatever you wanted to do, but you've got it all there. Then it's just a matter of putting two extra holes and you're all sorted there. The one I saw did have four holes in it as well, but again, when I saw them using the board, they only used two of the holes. So I suppose it just gives it that little bit more flexibility. I've measured mine to what looks good on the board, so I'm not bringing it too far to one side, so I risk spl splitting the wood or losing some strength out of it either, um, but also with enough gaps so that I can fit a decent branch or piece of wood in there that I can then use. So it's sh bigger than what I would normally use, but not too much bigger so that I'm not overcompensating. I'm doing what I would use it for. Okay then, so all I'm gonna use is a drill bit. I'm not gonna bother clamping it down. Obviously health and safety, you should clamp it, but uh, I'm not going very far. It's a nice, easy 
low power drill. Um, I'm using a 15 mil Forstner bit so that I can get a thick enough hole to fit the rope through. I've measured that up to make sure and that's going to be a nice snug fit there as well which should help me to, to use my legs to pull it down nice and tight as well. If I need to you can always go one size bigger but it's the old adage you can always take off more wood you can't ever put it back on again so it's always good to go with the tightest fit first really and then go from there. Okay so I'm just going to drill these in now. Four roughly cut holes. Unfortunately, my fortunate bit isn't as quite as sharp as I'd like it to be. So all I'm going to do now is I'm just going to grab my knife, my Mora knife, and just ever so slightly just come around the holes, take some of that fluff off around the inside. The Mora knife helps because it's got that that little curve to the blade there, so I can really get around those corners and really cut some out now. I'm not wearing any gloves, so I am being extra careful. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to do these sides first. I'm not going to worry too much about it being super soft because the rope is quite a nice natural coarse rope anyway. So it will over time naturally sand it down. I'm not that fussed really with it. And the rope barely cost anything, so if I was to need to, I will just buy some new rope. Obviously, mind for the wood grains there, you might have seen, I can feel it catching, so I'm swapping sides. When you catch a bit, it's going to split. Yeah, that's not too bad. Like I said, the rope is, over time, going to slowly wear that through anyway, so I'm not that fast. Okay. Okay, so next thing I'm going to do is, using the Mora knife, I'm just going to take the edges off ever so slightly off of that corner. I'm going to work towards myself, and I'm going to stop when I start getting a bit too close. And I'm going to work right up to the top there, so that way... All I have to do is just that end part there, and I'm being extra careful. In fact, I'm going to bring it back towards me again. I'm not going to worry too much about that big old knot there, because I don't want to damage my knife. Knots don't tend to be particularly sharp as such. They're just annoyingly in the way. I'm going to do that all the way around the outside. And all that does then is it just takes the edge off, just Makes it a bit softer against the body, a bit softer against anything I might accidentally bash it with. It just makes it a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. So I'm not going to let you watch all the way through as I do that. I'm going to finish that off quickly and then it should just be the final part. Okay then, so I measured out my rope nice and ready and all I did was stood on it with my feet and then brought it round to a comfortable position. Um, I'm not going to be too comfortable sitting like that the whole time. I'm going to be much more comfortable like this. So I brought it into that and I've made it just meet slightly overlap. That will account for tautness and for a knot in the middle of it as well. So that I've got the space in my legs to be nice and tight, to pull it tight, but also be comfortable as well. What I've done on the ends to stop the knot from fraying once I've cut it is I've wrapped it. Same as you would do with a walking stick um, or with maybe uh, the uh, handle of a knife or something like that for comfort. Um, I will do a video in the future about different knots and wrapping techniques that I tend to use, but there are plenty on YouTube already and on Google. There's loads of books out as well on how to wrap and do different knots and things. Do go and have a look. There's some great, uh, great examples out there as well. This is just a nice and simple one. Um, and it's an old one they used to use a lot when it came to rope making and boats and things like that, which is just to stop the ends from fraying. So you're basically just tightening it all up so that if it starts to fray, it can't go much further than that wrap. Okay, that's all I'm going to do there. And so now is the moment of truth. So I'm just going to thread that through there. And I haven't adjusted those holes. That's exactly what I needed it to be. And then I'm going to wrap this, the other end just through that one. Pull them through. 
and that's it. That's all I'm going to use it for. Now again, you've got the other two holes there as well. So as I progress, as I use bigger pieces of wood, I may well need to use both of them and just put both of them ropes around my legs. But for now, I'm just going to give that one a go. And I'm just going to tie a simple reef knot in that for comfort. Um, again, reef knot, simple Boy Scout one. It's just two overhand knots the other way around. You do it one way, you do it the other way. And you pull it tight and that's a great knot for anything you're going to be pulling tight because the more you pull it the tighter it's going to get the more you push it back together it's going to come undone so it's a nice easy one to cut to take apart if i needed to take it apart so i can readjust it i can move it up and down the rope nice and easily that's a great one to do and so that's basically the board so if we move my little table out of the way here this is how i would use it just putting it on my lap, wrap it inside of my legs, and then I can clamp whatever I needed. So let's just find <laughs> the other end of the rope here into that, pull it tight with my legs, tight on there, tight on there, keeping it tight. I've got a nice, sturdy work workplace there. It helps to protect my legs, helps to hold the work tight should hopefully work an absolute treat if you're going to have a go at this uh, please do let me know how you get on uh, that'd be really great any adjustments you make as well mine's going to stay nice and simple probably full of nicks and cuts over the years and time to come but uh, you can decorate them as much as you want you can make it all fancy you can stain the wood you can paint it wood burn it whatever you wanted to do i think the only adjustment i might do might put some hooks and things on here so i can store the tools i'm using as and when i'm using them quickly on the sides but that's just an idea over time to use as well. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Please do like and share it. Uh, hit the like buttons, the shares buttons, the subscribe buttons, whatever buttons are on there as well. Please do find me on Instagram and on YouTube. Uh, I'm on YouTube, uh, on Facebook even. And uh, that'd be great to see you on there as well. I'm most active on Instagram. So please do stop by and see all the things I get up to. Cheers. Thanks. Bye-bye.